and uh, get started it's a little after seven. So I'd like to call tonight's school board meeting for Thursday, July, uh, June 18th to order. Can I please have tonight's attendance? Ms. Dorgan. Mrs. Giftos. Here. Dr. Gill. Here. Ms. Casalonis. Here. Ms. Layton. Here. Mrs. Sither. Here. Mrs. Turner. Here. And Mr. Bennett. Here. Oh, if you could, um, Leanne, can you just yeah. promote uh, Hillary? She's in as an attendee. Oh, sure. Is this just a way of keeping her from talking the whole meeting? <laughs> <laughs> With that, if you would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I swear I'm at the standing station today. That's why I didn't shift spots. Um, are there any adjustments to you tonight's agenda? Okay. Seeing none. Moving into public comments, a um, couple of ways that you can provide comments tonight. One, you can email us at publiccomment at scarboroughschools.org, and we can read that statement into the public record, or please raise your hand in the Zoom meeting and we'll promote you as an attendee so you can speak. The raising of your hand is similar to lining up behind the podium in a public setting. You will be placed in the order of your arrival into the queue. Due to recent issues with other districts, Zoom meetings and security, we ask that you use your legal name for all public comments. Please also state your full name and address, including the town if you are not a Scarborough resident for the record. Each member interested in speaking is invited to comment one time for approximately three minutes, and we will do our best to keep the time consistent amongst the participants. Please refrain from directing statements at or about individuals, and also please note the board cannot reply or respond to the comments made this evening. And seeing one. Mark, I've promoted you. If you can unmute yourself, you should be able to speak. Do I have a clear connection? You do. All right, great. Hello, my name is Mark Tardiff. I live in Buxton. I'm the vice president of faculty for the Scarborough Education Association. And first off, I want to thank you all for the time that you have put into this entire budget process. I know it's been long and difficult. Uh, we all recognize that it's been extremely um, difficult. Sorry to use the same word again. I should have changed that up. Um, and there are a lot of hard decisions that um, have had to been, been made. Uh, on behalf of the SEA, I want to respectfully request that the board keep all faculty and educational support positions in the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Karen, I have promoted you. Hi, uh, my name is Karen Walker. I live at 15 Grandview Drive in Scarborough. I am a teacher at Wentworth School and I am an instructional coach and I am imploring, I am imploring you to not cut any personnel, including bus drivers, teachers on provisional contract and instructional coaches. During the upcoming unprecedented school year, we will need more staff to keep our students safe and to educate them. I would like to speak on behalf of our teachers that are instructional coaches to briefly share with you what teachers that are instructional coaches do during both in-person school and what they did during distance learning. Teaching has become a profession that requires much more than what it looked like when we went to school. Coaches support enabling this to occur. There are four roles that coaches play at all phase levels. The way this looks at the time that is spent on, teach, uh, on each of these roles is different based on the needs of the phase level, as well as the district and the phase level goals. These roles are coaching. As a learner-centered coach, including data analysis to guide professional development and instruction, co-teaching, model teaching, and giving feedback to staff on lessons. 
as a learner facilitator to support new staff on best practice instructional strategies and helping teachers to learn and teach Scarborough Public Schools adopted curriculum. As a resource provider, a certain in quality resources and when they include technology, helping to ensure they meet data privacy requirements, planning, organizing, and facilitating required standardized and progress monitoring testing. With instruction and support, assessing students upon teacher request, meeting with small groups of students as needed. During distance learning, coaches organize, plan, and lead professional development. We help teachers to be able to use learning management platforms including Google Classroom and Seesaw, as well as Google Meet, amongst many other digital teaching resource, uh, learning resources. Continuing to educate children for the future, coupled with current changes to our practice, will take a team, whether we are learning in person, at a distance, or in a blended model. Teachers do and will need additional support to successfully accomplish that task and the workload they face. I hope that this has helped the board and citizens to understand the importance of not cutting the teachers that are called instructional coaches. Please do not cut any personnel. Thank you for this time, and I appreciate all the work that you are doing for our schools. Thank you, Karen. I'm just going to give it one more second to see if anyone else has any comments tonight. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comments. Moving into new business, 6.1 school board summer meeting schedule. Um, this is our last regularly scheduled meeting of the summer. Um, usually we move into only having one meeting in July and August. Um, recognizing that, as I've said probably 800 times, there is nothing normal about this year or this season. Um, so wanted to really talk about whether or not we should have more meetings, um, if we should stick with the two meetings um, throughout the summer based on when we have a budget vote coming up, um, looking at how we're getting back to school. So the calendar is on. Um, if we were going to follow our traditional pathway, the first meeting of the month is July 2nd knowing that lots of people will probably be away for that. I'm not sure that's the best time to have um, a school board meeting um, over the holiday weekend. So really just wanted to talk, open this up to what folks are thinking about as far as frequency of meetings um, and if there are already scheduled vacations or downtimes that we're going to have. Alicia. Uh, there are two concerns that I have. I, I, I don't really take a position about when we meet other than there are two subjects that I think that we should consider um, when we schedule our meetings. One is um, the, the teacher's contract and um, releasing that information to the public um, has been an issue, as, as we all know, um, and um, I'd like to have some sort of forum for that if um, and, and invite our attorney to come talk about that so that the public can ask questions and we can ask questions in public about why the details of the um, contract are not uh, released before, before the budget vote. So that that's one request that I have. And then the other request that I have is um, when, uh, when we made decisions about distance learning, it was, you know, obviously under imminent circumstances and we didn't really have time uh, to provide feedback to the extent that we wanted to. And I know that there's a full team of um, individuals working on, on on um, distance learning and, and opening our schools. But I do think it would be helpful to schedule times to check in throughout the summer so that we can allow the public to give input on that and so that we can provide input. So I'd like to consider um, scheduling some of those updates in, in the summer as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kristen? 
Yeah, my comment was to Alicia's second point um, to cover what we are doing on the start team. So our last set of meetings are what that the 22nd and 23rd. So if we have to have a second meeting that last week in July, that might be helpful. Because I do think that there's going to be a lot of information and I think the board and the public are going to be pretty interested to hear that. And I want to make sure we have time. That was it. Agreed. Thank you. Um, I would also say that looking at a budget vote on the 14th, we should probably be considering something right around that time frame as well, um, just to know what happens. Is it successful, or do we need to look at um, potentially having to go back out on referendum? Um, and what our options are at that point. So I think that should probably factor in as well. So it's, it's starting to sound like we have a full season of meetings for the summer. April? Um, just for clarity's sake, I guess. Um, we currently have a meeting on the schedule for July 16th. So that would have been what was our scheduled July meeting. Um, and not that I absolutely have to be in attendance, but I did plan our vacation, our family vacation for the week before that. Um, and so I will not be available the week, the 5th through the 11th. Okay. Nick? Oh, am I muted? I'm nope. not muted. Uh, <laughs> um, so if we have a meeting, so if we have a meeting on the 16th, and, and Hillary, if she was here, may know more about this, but I know they're still trying to hammer out exactly when to sit down and sign, give both parties to sit down and sign the contract. It hasn't wrapped up, it's up to signing it. Um, obviously, we can't probably present it and talk about it till after it's signed by the letter of the law. So I don't know for that issue if it would make much sense in meeting before that happens. Um, but I know it's supposed to happen this month, so that probably is a moot point for July. I guess I just want to be mindful of everybody's schedules. I know everyone was expecting to only have two meetings in the summer. Um, I mean, I, I think if we I think August might be the more pressing time for us because of the emerging COVID. I mean, on, on the, those of us that are all on the start teams know how deep those conversations are, and I think there's going to be a lot of information to share. And maybe that comes out in the form of a workshop that we add to a meeting so that we can cover more. I think that might be a really great way to get that information out in a way that's um, concise and, and uh, able to allow us to chat a little bit before an official meeting. So I, I guess I'm wondering, do we need more than two meetings over the summer or do we need to pair in a couple workshops with those two meetings so that we can cover some of these more detailed topics? That's a great point, Nick. Um... My only concern about waiting until, and, then, and if I'm going to follow when the calendar is, and thank you, April, for keeping me honest on the dates that were scheduled, um, that puts us to August 13th. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried that that's not enough time, that with school starting basically 15 days later, um, if people need to figure out childcare or work with their employers if they're at home, I really feel like we would not be doing them the proper service to not have more notice if we have it. Um, that's just a concern that I have as we look at this. Um, if we know closer to the end of July, and maybe it's a, if we know we can publish a meeting then, mm. I, I just would really hate to sit on that information and not have public input. Um, Sarah? Yeah, so, uh, this may be a public, uh, sorry, a, a special meeting, and I can talk about this a little bit more when we get to the budget, but, um, you know, assuming we pass our second reading tonight, next week, town council will do their second reading. If their number is different than our number, then we have to have another vote. And so, and that would have to happen before the referendum. Um, so, so that's either a special meeting next week at some point or, or the week after that. And it could literally be a, a 15 minute meeting um, or it can be a regular schedule board meeting, but just wanna be mindful that we do need that will be an, there will be action that we need to take depending on the outcome of their meeting. Thank you for that. Hillary? 
I was just going to suggest that, um, Kristen, can you say again what the last day of your start team meeting is? Yeah, it's on the 23rd of July. So that is a Thursday. So I was just looking at the calendar thinking if we want to process that information as quickly as possible, the next date for us to be able to do that would be July 30th. So should we just schedule, keep this, keep the regularly scheduled July 16th meeting and add one for the 30th? And maybe that is a workshop like to Nick's point. I think the 16th is gonna to be too late for us to do anything for the budget though. So I think unless. Well, I'm yeah. just trying to be mindful of April schedule because I was gonna say the 9th and the 23rd, but that conflicts, the 9th conflicts with April schedule and then the 23rd, I'm guessing won't be enough time for that, those meeting materials to have been, um, you know, made, made into like a cohesive um, piece of information for us to, to look through. So, I mean, I guess we what could do the, the 30th. The ninth being enough time for to do anything with the budget, and then the thirtieth being late enough to do um, that information from the start team. Hopefully, so that would be three weeks in between, but it would still be two meetings in July. Yeah, um, I see. The other option is we put a special meeting on the agenda for next Thursday night, um, and if council does not change the numbers, we cancel the meeting. Just a thought. I, I think hey, does that, maybe does that turn line. around work. Sorry. Oh, go ahead, April. That's no, okay. I, I, I think that the ninth is much too late to have the budget talk with the referendum the following Tuesday, like people want to know what they're, what they're voting on. We need to turn that number around quickly for the voters, because once town council sets the, num the referendum number, that's what goes out, but people are going to want to know what our response to that number is in terms of what reduction specific reductions we're going to have to make if well, there are any we've also heard a lot of feedback of, that people want to hear before they vote what's contained in the contract and i'd like to respect that feedback so yep. so can we can an earlier together? date yeah can an earlier date of next thursday accommodate both of those things i think i think so I, I would just ask Kate if that's possible to turn something around that quickly from a Wednesday to a Thursday. I think we have to do that, Sarah, because as, as okay. soon as the town council votes, the town clerk is going to be reaching out to us to have the document that puts that money into the categories that need to be posted at the polls and need to go with absentee ballots. So um, it's, it's incumbent on us to sort of have a, at least a small plan to work towards any changes that might be happening. And uh, I think we do need to move that same same week and make those changes because that document needs to be posted. So why don't we why don't we bookend July for now? We'll do the first, the Tuesday, which I mean sorry, the second and then the 30th. I thought we we're doing the no, no, no. We, the we need 25th. to do it next Thursday, the the 25th. That was the June. next Thursday is the second, isn't it? No. June 25th. No, no the 25th. Oh, never mind then. And Leanne, can you invite um, somebody from Drummond Woodsum to that meeting if the contract's not um, public at that point? Yep. Thank you. Can do. Can we, would anybody be open to starting that meeting at six instead of sure. seven? Yep. I'm in. Cool. Hillary, your hand is up. Oh, sorry. Kristen? It was my old hand. Oh. Mine actually is still up. What was the meeting on July 16th for? Anything in particular? Is that like, I'm wondering it's, if we can jump that and make that an emergency. Should we need it after the 14th? Um, we could do that and count it that way. Um, it really was just the one month or the one meeting in July. I like the idea of pushing that out to the 30th in order to have the information for um, 
the START committee, um, and I tried to think of the initials and they were just escaping my mind um, in order to have that. So if I have this correctly, we have a special meeting next Thursday night, 625, starting at 6 p.m., and then a meeting on 730, which would be a workshop. Um, any objection to starting that also at 6 o'clock? Sounds good to me. Okay. Wait, on what date are you saying that for? 730. No, what date? The 30th. 30th. The 30th. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and we will hold the 16th as... A special meeting which it'll be on the calendar but we're going to all hope like crazy that it ha can be canceled that we won't need to have that meeting because everything will go well on the 14th all right excellent that brings us to sarah um second reading of fy21 budgets all right Wait, sorry, are we just leaving August as is, or did I miss that? Um, yeah, August will stay on the 13th. Okay, are we, it looks like there's something ahead of me on the slides, the probationary staff. Oh, looks like they're a little out of order. Okay. Um, do we want to, based on the way the slides are, do we want to make a quick adjustment and go through appointments before we go into the second reading? Sure. Uh, Sandy, does that work for you? Yes. Yep. Okay. Then let's go to 6.4.1, uh, second year probationary professionals. Okay. Leanne, you want me to just read these off? Or? Yes, please. Okay. So page, uh, probationary second professionals, we have Paige Andrews, Kate Chapman, Eliza Halby. Claire Ledoux, Catherine Newell, Jennifer Fataliano, not sure about that. What was that? I'm Vitagliano. Thank you. Um, Kitty Bava, Jocelyn Deannabelle, Carly Hughes, Brian Lamont, William Bridge, Heather Wiggins, Connor Casey, Kristen Goodall, Heidi Ignelli. Kimberly Littlefield, Christopher Riley, Gwen Cecil, Carla Griffin, Melissa Johnston, I believe. My slide is kind of covered up there. Melissa Mills and Caroline, and I don't see the last name because the Thompson. Everybody's pictures on there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and these are still probationary people, I believe. And Paige, whoops, Megan Alteria, Jillian Daigle, Lauren Haringi, Scott McDonald, Laura Rizbera, Crystal Tate, Daniel Anderson, Rachel Gilson, Rose, Rosie Lennon, Kara Moore, Ashley Smith, Susan Teal, Jessica Arnock, Megan Haley, Brian, Brianna Linscott, Sarah Oliver, Amy Sullivan, and again, the pictures are kind of covering up the last names here, so I cannot see the last names. If somebody could help me with those. Ann Crowley, Maura Heffernan, Catherine, okay. Litra Capes, Amanda Peabody, and Meredith Schwarz Schwarzengruber. Thank you. Continuing contract professional, Zachary Barrett, Jessica Chappell. Whitney Nathan, Sarah Belton, Cantel, Chantel, Dion Michu, Melissa Shabo, Nancy Carroll, Deidre Dupree, James Temple, Karen Cassidy, and the last two names I can't see, I'm sorry. Ashley Fasulo and Abigail Wilworth. Thank you. Sorry, can I just interrupt and ask for a quick explanation for um, anyone who's watching about what these first year, second year probationary, third year probationary and continuing contract means. I mean, I can do it, but it's probably better coming from you, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, so um, first and second year people are prob probationary. And that means that like, for instance, the first year you're hired, 
you have a one year contract and then we put you on a second year contract and you're still uh, probationary. And then once you've done two years, you can go to a continuing contract. That's your third year. And uh, there's more stability with that. And hopefully people will stay on that continuing contract for the rest of their career. But the first two years typically are probationary and that gives the district time and for the teacher to uh, make sure that it's a good fit and we're very blessed that we have great professionals that we have on these lists and we're looking forward to having another great year with them. Congratulations to everybody and welcome. All right. Now moving into the second reading of our FY21 budget. Thanks, Leanne. Um, so normally what we would do at this stage is uh, just kind of do a short presentation and just go right into the numbers in the second reading and have some discussion. Um, but given that things are changing so quickly and every day, um, we're actually, I'm actually going to kind of run through just a high level of overview of the reductions. Um, and then we actually have some decisions to make as a board based on what we decide we'll then move into the second reading and Kate uh, is a saint and has basically drafted the second reading with a number of potential outcomes. So hopefully one of those, one of those is an outcome that we actually land on and she's not having to do fast math on the fly, um, but I'm, I'm confident that we will be covered. So I think I, I just wanna make a point that um, this has been a, every year is a really challenging budget year. Um, there's no easy decisions that came with this. Um, there's hard decisions, harder decisions, and sort of impossible decisions. Um, the challenges this year have been even more so than the years past, just trying to balance the needs and safety of our students, while also trying to meet the goals that have been set by us by the town council, um, even if we don't agree with them or like them. Um, ultimately, it's it's their directive, um, and I think we've we've done a really good job and outspoken and and fought for what we think is appropriate um, and needed for to keep our students and our district um, safe. So um, I have shared this before, but it's worth reiterating that when we were going through the budget process, the finance committee, um, the guardrails that the finance committee used um, to make recommendations were to maintain programs and activities as well as staff who have direct interaction and impact on students. So that was kind of our, our North Star. Um, so with that, I want to run through the reductions that are in the current budget. Um, and I won't go into detail. You guys have all this information. And for anyone who's watching, um, I believe, and Kelly can confirm, but I believe all of this has been posted under the supplemental material for our meeting as well. And then hopefully after tonight, we'll get out a clean copy that everyone will have. We'll circulate it like crazy, and people will know exactly what's in the budget and what's been taken out. Um, so starting with the operating budget, um, there has been some reduction in uh, for personnel um, and just due to retirements and turnover. Um, we've taken quite a bit out of discretionary accounts for all phase levels and departments. Um, we've removed some non-instructional positions, so that's um, administrators. Um, we've removed bus drivers, but we've actually put them back in as part of the COVID ask. Um, and then we've reduced those in the investments. There was for a request for four K-2 teachers. We've reduced that down to three based on the current kindergarten numbers. Um, we've made the decision or the recommendation um, to not backfill two instructional coach positions that are made vacant by retirement. Um, we've changed the structure of the athletics administration um, and then we've actually reduced the athletics budget even further because boosters have offered to step up um, and cover $30,000 for uniforms. So thank you very much to them for doing that. Any, cool, oh, sorry, go back. Thank you. Um, and then in CIP, um, we've cut about $250,000 for items that are scheduled to be appropriated, which have a direct impact on our tax rates next year. 
and about $750,000 from items that are scheduled to be bonded. And because it's a topic, I did just want to call out that the STEM lab, as well as the retrofit for the garage, are included in that memo. Any questions before we move on? You mean they're included in the reduction, not that they're included in the budget? Correct. Yep, they're included in the 757000 So there's actually no impact to our tax, like the mill rate calculation because of that reduction, um, but we did feel it was important to make that reduction. Can Dan, just, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to make one clarification. So the two instructional coach positions, um, the way this is written, um, those are not being made vacant by retirements of those instructional coaches. They're being made vacant by other retirements at that level. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. And can you clarify okay. that those are the only changes in the instructional coaches, Sarah? Our, oh my goodness. I believe that's the case, and Kate will correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yep, cool. So any other questions before we move on to the decision point? Sorry, Leanne. Nope, we're good. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so um, you guys will remember that in the original budget, the one that we had for first reading, we had $100,000 in the CIP for long-range planning that was out dedicated or going to be used for the planning and design work um, for the new school. That was, we knew at the time that that wasn't enough um, and that it was underestimated, but we didn't have the time to make the adjustment before first reading. So we left it in there with the um, decision that we would change it after first reading to bring it up to what, what it needed to be. At that point, we were kind of going back and forth with town council and we were already being asked to reduce our, reduce our budget. So it wasn't until our last finance committee meeting where we made the decision on whether we wanted to just leave it at $100,000, which we knew was going to be underfunded, whether we wanted to put the full amount in, which is 375, so that would be an additional 275,000, or whether we wanted to take it out. Um, and we made the decision or the recommendation as a finance committee to actually fully fund it on the basis that um, it's needed. We believe that the project is is still needed. Our enrollment numbers of the growth in this town have not changed. Um, and, you know, delaying this project is only going to incur more costs um, with the need for portables, et cetera. Um, however, we also decided to leave it in because we knew that that information was going to go to town council finance committee, and we really just wanted them to have a conversation about it. And so what we had asked them to do was we want this to be in. We believe there's still need for it. However, we would like it to be funded out of impact fees. So therefore, it doesn't have an impact on our operating budget. We don't have to make any further reductions in order to cover it. Um, and we can continue on with the project as planned. They have not made a concrete decision on that. Um, they had some commentary around it, but really it's up to us as a board to make that decision, knowing that if we keep it in fully, um, there are other things that we're gonna have to take out either of, out of CIP or operating budget um, and potentially take out even more depending on what, what town council does at their meeting. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there for discussion, but the couple options that we have are do zero. So bring it, from, bring it back down to zero. We could fund it at 100. Um, we could fund it fully, or we could fund it somewhere in the middle and ask that town council makes up the difference with the impact fees, which I believe there's about a little less than $200,000 that are available, that's available in the, two, in the impact fees. And Kate can give us that exact number. April? So just to build on what Sarah said, um, the finance committee did have a long discussion about what to do about this um, account. Um, we all have, we all see merit in fully funding it and, and making sure that the community um, understands that this is, this is the need and this is how much it's gonna cost to contract an architecture firm. And I see value in putting that number out there frequently um, so that 
Uh, no one feels blindsided by that number when they see it as a line item in our budget. Um, the conversation on Tuesday afternoon between the town council finance committee member uh, meeting, town council finance committee members and uh, two other members of the council were also present did not go well. Um, they were not receptive to the idea of that money of those monies being in our CIP. Um, as Sarah pointed out, we as a board still can prioritize those funds. But if I'm being honest, I think that the recommendation of the council is going to be to remove them or their their directive is going to be to reduce our CIP um, by that number. And that is going to put us in a position of having to decide whether or not we're going to prioritize those funds over other things or whether we are also going to take them out. Um, I also just lastly think that there um, is um, th there are bigger reasons to, to, to take the money out um, in terms of town council appetite for things like this. Um, and under no circumstance do I want to not put forward something that I believe is a need because I'm afraid town council is going to say no. Um, and so that is not at all what I'm suggesting that the board um, consider. However, I do think we need to be realistic um, and from where I am sitting, this is not going to be a realistic ask in this budget cycle. Thank you. Nick? So I've been looking over the handouts that um, Kate distributed. And I actually, she was kind enough to print me a paper copy. Thank you, Kate, because I just like to, I got to sit on my backyard today and write all of them, which is wonderful. Um, and I've been looking at the four different versions and one of the things that stands out to me that that I I may be the only one here that's championing it, but I or maybe I'm not. I've always believed that you should maintain what you have before you design or build something new. And so when I look at this eighty-one thousand nine hundred dollars that's in here, that we kind of we kind of go back and forth, keeping it or not keeping it for paving and maintaining playgrounds and fixing paving. I I am much I'm very I'm much more comfortable keeping that in there before even some of the full design work for the new school, only because I just have a hard time sacrificing maintaining our valued facilities that we have so that we can move money toward designing a brand new one, even though that facility is needed. And even though we've been talking about it for a long time, um, I do agree with April. I think that they're pro if we put everything in here, there's going to be a mandate to take some of it out. Um, and so I guess I think about what Sarah just said about, you know, if, if there's a portion of this $375,000 that we can move over to impact fees, or I know we've also floated the idea out there about funding this throughout several different fiscal year cycles. I think we need to think about that. I think putting the three, the, the full 375 in here as it is will feel a little tone deaf to our council and I'll have a hard time supporting that. But what I really want to champion is keeping in that 81.9 because I think we need to demonstrate to everybody, to our students, to, who are in these facilities, because I remember this new building's at least five years out, but for our students that are in these facilities and for our community that, that shows so much value in, in all of our schools and, and pride in the schools that we have, I, I wanna make sure that we're keeping them up the best we can and not sacrificing upkeep so that we can design a school that's five or six years down the road. I know, sorry, Leanne, I know there's people with hands up, but I do just wanna make a clarification. Nick, the $81,900 is, is sort of a, if we need to cut. And that was based off of the numbers that Tom gave at the town council finance committee meeting on Tuesday. So we would only need to cut further depending on what we decision we come to with the long range planning line. So is your recommendation that we keep it at a hundred? Yes. Okay, thank you. Kristen? Yeah, I wanna start by saying thank you to the Finance Committee for bringing this up and, and, and fully funding it to have the conversation because if we don't, then we do lose sight of it. So I'm glad that you left it in there for discussion. That being said, 
I am not willing to cut anything else to fund that extra $275,000. Um, I would support leaving the hundred thousand in, in sort of building toward what we need. But I'm glad that we had this conversation, so people know that the need is very much still there. Thank you, Kate. I'll let you jump in. Uh, just a quick clarification. I think that with the scenario that the town manager laid out on Tuesday afternoon, if we keep the hundred thousand that we have. He would still be looking for the 81.9 as a reduction to hit the 1.16% tax rate increase target. So it would kind of be a trade off. If we keep the 100,000, then we'd probably need to reduce the 81.9 to hit that target. Um, and the extra 275 is just kind of floating out there as not really being dealt with in, in a sense by the, the Town Council Finance Committee. Does that make sense? That was Thank my understanding that. too, yeah. okay. Yeah. Alicia? Well, it, yeah, never mind. Go ahead, Alicia. Oh, sorry, Sarah, if you have a clarification. Nope, go ahead. Okay. I'm really discouraged by this conversation because um, it's our role to advocate for what the schools need. We all know that this is a need. It's not going away. Town council's not prioritizing it. And now for some reason, we're not prioritizing it either. And the, the rationale that I'm hearing is, well, because it's not gonna be palatable to town council. That, that's not our problem today. Our, our, what, our, what our goal today is, is to determine what our schools need and what what the bottom line is that we can give to them while trying to be respectful and mindful of, of the goals that they've set. If they're unwilling to fund it, then we come back and we have this discussion again. I mean, all we're doing is putting it forward and then we can make other dis decisions, but we're, we're not being champions for our school system or our kids if we say, well, that's probably not gonna go over well, so we're not gonna fund it. We, we all know it's a need. Hillary? Yeah, um, thank you, Alicia. That's almost exactly what I was gonna say. Um, and so I completely 100% agree with you. I think that, um, so I won't talk about how all of that, but I will say um, in addition to what Alicia said, that you know, we we talk a lot about oh well the school's four years out or the school's five years out, but every year or or you know six months or every time we delay funding this and getting it started, it's another year. So it's only five years out if it was funded now and and work got started in this phase, like um, the architectural phase, this year. Anything later than that, now the school's six years out anything later than that, now it's seven years out. And like, I forget who just said it, that's seven years or six years that we're gonna be paying a cost every year to increase our capacity in a temporary way. And so I think it is important. We've already said that we're, we're not going to prioritize it over jobs and programs, but I 100% agree with Alicia that this is what's needed. And in fact, one of the counselors yesterday, I think it was Jean Marie, I think she was probably um, talking about how she didn't like the idea of this money, but in, do, in doing so, she actually like listed out all of the reasons why we do need to do it. She said, we don't even know where it's gonna be yet. And that's exactly right, we don't. We need to get started on that work. This is the money to do that work. We do need to find out where it's going to be. We do need to find out what it's going to look like. And this is what's going to fund that information. I'm done. Kristen? Uh, yeah, I think those are fair points. And I, I mean, I'm not opposed to sending it to town council. I just, I guess my thing is I don't, 
want anything else to come out in its place. But like I said before, I think the conversations are important to have and I'm not, I'm not opposed to sending it to town council. Alicia. Thank you. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but um, I've, I forgot to say something that I really wanted to say, which is there's a lot of money in, in that impact fee account and it's supposed to be put towards growth and the town council's objection, one of their many objections to us accessing that money has been you're out of budget cycle to access that money. So this is the time to, to put forward the request. So what we wait halfway through the year, like they're telling us, and then half of them are gonna have the the um, objection that we're out of budget cycle making the request. I, again, I, I think that we put it forward. Maybe it will, maybe it will prompt them to have the conversation about um, a little bit more thoroughly about impact fees and nudge them along. And then if it does unfortunately come back to us, you know, I think we all, recognize that we'll have to make some um, tough decisions again, but um, I, I would feel a lot better and I would feel um, more responsible in our decision making. I've been super patient, so I'm gonna pop in real quick before um, Sarah and April, you're on. I'm gonna agree that we need to put this to town council. If they wanna cut this, they can cut it, um, but we are responsible much like the next decision point that's coming up to do what is in the best interest of our students. We know that we need a building. We know that we're growing. We know that social distancing is gonna be darn near impossible in the facilities that we have. And don't we wish this had been started and we were getting ready to move in this year. Um, again, if we need to make hard decisions, you know, on next week, we make those hard decisions next week, but I don't think we would be doing justice to the district if we didn't at least attempt to get the funding that we needed. Sarah? Uh, thanks, Leanne. I, the only, I, I agree with what Alicia said, said about the impact fees. And I, I guess for anyone who wasn't watching, I'll just share that the town manager offered a suggestion, which was uh, that we keep it in at 100 and th that if we need it, we go back to them and ask for the remainder out of impact fees. Um, we already know we need it and we already know we want it to come out of impact fees. So we just need to ask for it. And we, there's always this money sitting in impact fees that is the school money to put towards growth project or projects that are impacted by growth and we need to ask for it. Um, and I'll, I'll say what everyone else is saying, just so it's on the record, this will not get in at the expense of, of jobs but I in programs but it is important I think and, and I will vouch for it to go back to the council um, and we'll make that argument again for it to be used at an impact fees because we're asking for it at an appropriate time and not out of budget cycle. April? So I just want to throw in a couple of things because I know um, from personal experience how frustrating it is sometimes when town council that's around a conversation and um, we've already discussed the topic and they are not using um, publicly available information to inform their decisions or their discussions. And so just so that you guys all are aware, um, they did have a lengthy discussion about impact fees on Tuesday night and um, Ruth Porter result, uh, gave the account balance, which after, and I'm not going to get the exact numbers right, and I apologize, um, after we pay the designated amount that they pay down school debt out of that account, and we can discuss the merits of doing that at another time, but right now it is scheduled to be a half a million dollars to pay down school debt is coming out of that impact fee account, and the balance on that account is only about $128,000. Um, and so we can, again, I'm more than happy to repeatedly have the conversation about impact fees, um, but I just don't want us to go completely down this conversation hole without having recognized that they did talk about it on Tuesday and some totals were given on Tuesday night. And so 
um, the resulting conversation was that there isn't enough in that impact fee account to fully fund this request as of right now. Did they Not say when, that, funded, re when it gets replenished? So the numbers that they use are two years prior. Yes, that what Ruth typically does is uses whatever we put in two years prior to pay down um, school debt. Because of the portable request um, over the last couple of years, we we significantly overdrew what was put in in that in the in that two year window, um, and for whatever reason, the amount that they're putting towards um, school debt to me seemed higher than than has typically been the payment schedule out of that account. But it may just be a reflection of what was put in two years ago. I would have to look at the actual spreadsheet. But I mean, when's their fiscal year end so that the account will be? Uh, that fiscal year, ends on, fiscal year ends on June 30, Alicia, but I, I think that the collection of impact fees is just dependent on who's selling property, who's building and selling property. So it's it, there's not a way to necessarily predict exactly when that money's gonna come in. Yeah. Um, so that's why they've traditionally used the money that's already in the bank and then not you know, banked on, if you will, the money that they think is gonna be coming in in the same way that they would bank on like excise tax that's pretty predictable. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hillary? Um, I just wanted to add uh, that I, I've been to, I went to, I was at that finance meeting. Um, I think I've been to all the finance meetings. Um, but I, I thought that the, the conversation that they had around the impact fees was interesting because it seemed to me that at least two of the finance committee members were um, reacted favorably to using the impact fees for this, for, for this project. Um, and in fact, one of the town councilors was the person who said to us, if you need it, you should ask for it and fund it fully. Um, so I guess my question is, and maybe this is just a question to them um, on town council, or maybe Kate knows, if, if there's an item in capital improvements that's $375,000, does it have to be funded all from the same source? I mean, could they, instead of saying, no, we're not gonna fund that, could they say, okay, well, a um, 100,000 of that will be, out, um, what's the A? What is the A? Appropriated? Appropriated. Appropriated. And the rest will be used out of impact. Like, can they split a cost like that? Is that in their purview? Yes, they can. Okay, so, I mean, I do, I do think, again, that even, convinces me even more that this is something, I mean, we've, we all know that it's needed and um, they, they can have that conversation about using impact fees or partially using impact fees. Um, and, and I think that that's, I think that's important for them to have that conversation. I think just to April's point, the, the math doesn't tie out completely because if you're asking for 375,000, you have 166 in impact fees, you're still going to have more than 100,000 appropriated. I was just using that as an example. I mean, they could say, we'll fund 100,000 and you fund the rest, or they could say impact fees can do half and you do half. I mean, I don't know, that's my point. If they're allowed to make those kinds of decisions on, on funding, like in terms of splitting the funding for one project into two different ways of paying for it, then that's, that's the discussion that they can have and, 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 and use impact fees as a part of that. I think so. Sarah, you had your Man, hand I up. Think we probably need to, yeah, I was gonna throw out a suggestion, but I, I mean, I think, I think we need to vote on this, right? Um, we do, do you wanna have the conversation about the turf field before we make the vote or is that just a separate discussion? I think it's a separate discussion and, and okay. where we land on the, the CIP, or sorry, the long range planning is gonna impact other things as well. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion to fully fund the long range planning um, line in the budget uh, for $375,000 for the planning and design work for a new, new school. Second. 
I am not going to open it up to further discussion because we have talked about this for a while. Um, Diane, if we can move to vote. Yes. Ms. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yeah. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Sither. No. Mrs. Turner. Yes. And Mr. Bennett. Yes. Thank you. The motion does pass. Well, and, just, and just to put a pin in that, I think we can present it to town council um, with the request that 166 be covered out of impact fees, keep remaining, keeping the remaining 200 and some odd dollars in for to be funded out of the tax revenue. So, okay, Leanne, I'm going to let you uh, lead the second bullet point there. Okay. Um, coming out of the meeting that the finance committee had on Monday, um, and before we go too far, again, thank you for the million hours that finance committee and leadership has put in. Um, I have learned more this year about budgets than I ever thought that I would. Um, so thank you for all that you have done to get us here. But something resonated um, that Alicia had said about what our responsibility is. And our responsibility is to advocate for our students and their safety and their needs. It is what we are elected to do and to do anything less is unconscionable. Um, the turf field was pulled from CIP. We know that the turf field is really close on age. It's at a point after the GMAX results that we need to make sure that we're testing it each season before kids are on there. And it was pulled because we're hoping that some corporate sponsor is going to come in and help pay for this. This is a responsibility that we owe to our students for safety. Um, I know in conversations with Kate that that's not something that we can take on. We cannot put it in our um, budget to support this. But I think we'd be missing an opportunity to not advocate for a safety feature that our students need. Um, so I don't know if this is a resolution that we put forward that we are respectfully requesting that they reconsider this and make sure that our students have a safe place to be, um, or we apply some other sort of a pressure in there of making sure that this is funded somehow, whether it's you know starting a crowdsource or getting it back onto the CIP budget. April. So I, I have a few issues with the town council's finance committee recommendation not to put this forward. Um, first and foremost, we know that this is a bond item that will need to go to referendum and not including this in the FY21 budget process means that we will most certainly go this entire year without um, bringing up this discussion or putting it forward to the voters. Um, there was a lot of discussion about putting it forward in November, which is not necessarily something that I, I don't know if I would support that or not. We need more information um, in terms of the condition of the field and what, you know, what the results of the test. I know we were waiting on core tests and some other things that couldn't be done back this winter. And maybe even I just need a refresh of where we are. But point being, I'm not supportive of town council deciding that because this has gone out to referendum um, once that they're not willing to have this discussion again. Um, lots of things can change between now and next spring in terms of funding that project and the climate in the community might be different. And to say right now that voters don't have an appetite for it and they're not willing to put it back out just to me seems um, short-sighted because this is a safety concern that we all have. Kristen? Yeah, this is a super frustrating situation because we don't own the turf. It's the town's property. And I do think we need to do something to push them to leave this on the table. Like April said, if we don't put it in now, when are we going to talk about it again? That field is very close to not being safe for students to play on. So I, I don't know. I mean, they. 
I understand, I mean, I guess to some extent, I understand what they're saying is that they didn't want to put something out that the voters already said no to. I guess my feeling on that is I'm not sure they clearly explained the situation when it went out to vote the first time. Yeah. And I would really like another pass at it. I agree. Alicia? I unfortunately had to miss that meeting where they had the most recent discussion. But when we had that group workshop with town council, I was really disheartened that some of the comments included, well, if it was unsafe, the field would be chained up. And to me, it sounded like they might be willing to get to that point before they're willing to move forward. And so, again, this is one of those things that who's going to advocate for it? It doesn't seem like uh, they have the inclination to do that. And we know that it's not not in good shape and it's unsafe. And so I support your request. Thank you. Nick? Yeah, I mean, th there were two big pieces of misinformation when this went down last year. The first was that replacing the field had anything to do with the act of vandalism that had happened. And that circulated the community, all of us saw it online. And it's unfortunate that we weren't able to clear that up um, as both elected bodies really should have tried to do because people in the community were just misinformed about, about the disconnect between that event and the need to replace this field. Um, the other piece is that I think that the testing, I mean, we talked about it at length at one of our, our board meetings. I remember actually, um, uh, Athletic Director Legage and I going back and forth a little bit, talking about the nature of the test, that you're testing many different spots of the field and some did better than others. Now the overall average test allowed it to pass, but this is not a black and white situation. There are areas of this field, the high traffic areas, of course, just like a carpet in your home, that are dangerous. And that, you know, we can't ask our football players, please fall somewhere where no one's fallen before because it's safer over there. So I think there's just some miscommunication that it's disheartening to hear it not getting on the ballot because I guess I can understand the base logic of saying, well, they voted it down last year, why would we put it back? We're, we would put it back because we have better information and we've learned from the misinformation that went out last year. And I don't think it's okay to sacrifice our students and our athletes, not to mention our visiting athletes, their health, um, because we as elected members, and I'm not just talking about us, I'm talking about all of us, didn't do a good job of helping our community understand the true nature of this situation. Sarah? Um, I don't like it. I don't like the decision, but I, I disagree with the idea that you just put something back on the ballot because you didn't like the outcome. It, it was not like, it was poor communication. And, and I know that we take some responsibility for that and we don't take all of it. Um, but I think it should be go back on the ballot. I absolutely think it's a necessity, it's a safety issue, but there's something we need to change, right? Either the, we would need a workshop or something where we get more information or we need an updated ask, whether it's a reduced budget or an increased budget. Something needs to, in my mind, something needs to change before we can put it back on the on the ballot. Because if we're putting the same exact question, the same exact amount back on the ballot, that to me is uh, manipulating our democracy. Hillary? Um, I was going to say almost the exact same thing that Sarah just said, but then Nick convinced me that I might. So I agree with what Sarah said, but I think Nick has a point that there is information that maybe wasn't communicated and that maybe that is what has changed. So I guess I'm a little, I'm not torn because I think that, that there's anything, I mean, the, the turf, it, it, it's not safe. And there's places that I shouldn't say it's not safe. I mean, it is getting very close to the point at which we can no longer allow our students to play on it. It's not there yet, but I think it will be there before long and if we don't have a vote and ask for it to be replaced again then it might get there before we have the opportunity to do anything about it which in turn is going to cost the district a lot of money if we want to keep playing sports and we don't have our own field um 
but I mean, but on the other hand, I, you know, I think Sarah does have a point. Like we can't just manipulate democracy because it didn't, it, it wasn't the outcome we wanted. I, I guess I, I, I guess maybe I'll go back to the GSEA, you know, we kind of, um, it's, it's very similar to that in my mind. Like when we, when we asked whether we should be joining the GSEA, we didn't put a lot of information out. It got voted down and we said, you know what, we're gonna put it out again because we don't think we did a good job putting that information out. The information that we had wasn't, um, like we didn't think the voters had the information. And I think that maybe this is the same case. That's a good point. So I think I would support it or support some, you know, yeah. Kristen? Yeah, I, I respect that position, Sarah, a lot. And I, I'm open to the idea. I know when it went out to referendum, it was the turf and the track. I don't know the current status of the track. I would be, I mean, I would be open to the idea of just putting them out. I, and again, I would probably want an update on the information because I know that I think the general feeling was it wasn't productive to do them separately, but I'm not opposed to that if that's what we need to do to get a safe playing field. But again, I don't know the status of the track and how where we're at on that safety issue. I, can I make Hillary? a Oh, am I still on mute now? Can I make a suggestion? Like maybe, could we ask um, the athletic director to summarize the information that he thinks, um, and maybe even Todd Souza too, to, I don't know if he, I don't know, but somebody to summarize the information. Um, and then we can maybe use that to write some sort of resolution. Sure. Um... Sandy or Diane, do you think that that is something we could get in short order to get this back in front of council before next Wednesday? Um, my hope would be to request from them um, after a motion that this go back, that this wind up back in the CIP and go to the voters with whether it's new information or enhanced information in order to ensure safety. Yes, I'll uh, talk to both Todd and Mike, and we'll do our best to make that happen. Great, thank you. With that, is there a motion to ask the town council to put back into the CIP the turf field repairs for fiscal year 21? So moved. So moved. Second. And as we've already talked about it, Diane, I think we're ready for the vote. Great. Mrs. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Uh, yes, under the condition <laughs> that we actually get new information. <laughs> Something new. Something has to change. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. All right. Leanne, can I just clarify? I, I made a statement that the surf isn't, is the surf, the <laughs> turf uh, isn't safe. And I, I just want to sort of retract that statement and be a little bit more clear that, you know, it, we, ha we have it, it has its issues that we've identified and that it's like Hillary said, it's sort of working towards not being safe if we don't do anything um, yeah. about it. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's a great point of clarification. Um, and I would say the same that if I alluded to it not being safe to put them back out there, rest assured that I would not be sending um, anybody that lives in my house onto that field this season. So, all right, anything else with, um, oh, we need to vote on one of the uh, final motions, yeah. correct? So, I, I think what I'll do is I'll, at this point, ask Kate if she could just summarize maybe where we are and if there's any additional action we need to take before we vote on our second reading. I mean, our budget is not going to be, it's not going to meet the town council's goal. 
uh, where we are right now. I think we're saying we're all comfortable with that because that's we're putting forward something that we can support. Nick? Oh, are we, so I, I have Kate's materials in front of me as I know I'm sure everyone does, but I'm actually flipping through them. Um, are we talking about version one here? Yeah, so version one right now of the budget amendment includes the extra 275 for mm -hmm. the long range planning. And it still includes the 81,900, which was a recommendation for reduction from the town manager. Um, and we had kind of flagged in our, in our budget documents, the potential of taking out um, the uh, building envelope maintenance, a remainder of that balance for 31.9 and um, the remainder of the playground upgrade money for 50,000. That was kind of what we had pointed to. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we take a vote on version one, it maintains all of those things in your budget that you're approving. And then the other versions are sort of um, different scenarios of taking different pieces of those things out, those, those different, um, the decision points that we're talking about here. So there isn't one that has 375 in, but the 81,000 removed because, correct? Well, I, I don't know. Did I do one of those? No, that would <laughs> be 1A. Let's see. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So let's see. There was one for 275, keep 100,000. There was one for take all the stuff out. Total of 375 out. So we can we can make one, Sarah, that's that uh, removes the eighty one nine and leaves the three seventy five. If that's the will of the board, I'll just um, have you guys take a water break and I'll I'll figure out the math. I yeah, we I guess we'll put other. Maybe discuss that yeah. for a sec here and we'll see what that Yeah, like. my, uh, look, we're not gonna make any friends on town council, but my, um, I guess recommendation where I'm thinking right now is that we do go with just version one as is. And then if they vote otherwise, then we come back and we make further reductions to the entire CIP, maybe the 81,000, maybe some more from long range planning. But I think we, in my, my opinion and recommendation is that we just go with version one. No, April and Alicia, what you guys think? I agree. April is thinking. That's two. I mean, <laughs> uh, if we're if we're just talking finance committee. Um, I, I have some reservations that you guys don't have, so that and that's okay. I, I mean, it's not just finance committee, but I'm just curious what other what, what other people think if we want to remove an additional eighty one. So the eighty one thousand that Kate has earmarked, just to talk about that a little bit. So there is there is two lines for. Um, so ground or grounds maintenance and we have already reduced from that we've taken about thirty thousand dollars out that was going to go towards um some paving and just maintenance of roads and then there was an a, we kept some money in there for to make a playground at wentworth uh move towards it being ada compliant so if we accepted this eighty one thousand, it would reduce the playground and then Kate it would also reduce something else that I'm not it was the rest of the building envelope um that sort of scheduled preventive maintenance of of the walls the masonry at the high school can I yeah. clarify oh, my hands up clarifying question I'm pulling an Alicia I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go right in in front of you Alicia no I just want to clarify because at the finance meeting you guys had reduced the the amount, but you left in the amount for the ADA compliance. Right. So right. is that the eighty one thousand nine you're talking about, or is that? No. Does this have anything to get to? Okay. To get to the eighty one nine, we would have to further reduce that line, 
and which means reducing the playground as well as further reduce the building envelope maintenance. We've, we've done partial reductions for both of those lines, basically cut them both more or less in half. And then what we're saying is we would take the remainder of those and what we would have to do is it, in order to advance the projects, we'd be either have to sort of piece things together from operating budget if we wanted to move forward or we'd have to defer and ask for it again next year. Alicia? So um, can I just ask a question before I make my comment? Yeah. I, I think that this was the meeting that I missed where, where Tom Hall, I guess I think I heard you say, made this suggestion about this 81.9, is that right? Yeah, basically what he did was he took the information we gave him from our finance committee meeting and he said, with what you guys have presented, you can cut, you need to cut basically an additional $80,000 from your CIP in order to hit the, the town council goal of 1.16 mil rate. Leave that alone. But that so didn't, he, oh, sorry. That didn't, inc that didn't include the long range planning money. Was his suggestion um, where that should come from or who came up with the playgrounds and no. pavings? That was no. That was Kate. I mean, I said at the finance committee that I feel very strongly about the 80, Eight, moving forward on the ADA compliant playground. To, I mean, to me, that's a huge deal to think of of not moving forward on trying to get that playground accessible to kids that really need it. I'd rather, that's another thing that I'd, I'll figure out a different way. I mean, I, I'm not okay with that. Kristen? Yeah, I'm with Alicia. I'm not, I'm not okay with taking that funding away to meet the ADA compliance. It's a, I hate that we're even behind on that in the first place. So I don't want to see that go. April? Uh, I apologize. I completely um, misunderstood what the full impact of that 81,900 was. Um, I thought that that was just the gates that we, the security gates that we had talked about and some of the deferring some of the paving. Um, I absolutely am not in favor of taking out the full 81.9, um, especially if it contains that, that playground ADA piece. Absolutely not. Uh, so just to, to clarify, um, there was $67,100, which we identified in finance committee as a further reduction. That was um, the security gates and the paving, like um, April just said, and the $7,100 for the stage curtains that we were able to take care of with FY20 funds. So we had made those reductions you know, consciously and, and thoughtfully. And then what happened was the town manager said, well, if we could get another 81 or 82,000, then we would hit that 1.16% uh, tax rate increase target that, um, and, and his, his was sort of a high level concept of where all the bits and pieces could come from to make that happen. At the end of the day, $81,000 isn't gonna move the needle on the mill rate that much. Um, and it is gonna make a big difference for our students. Nick? Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm just looking at the, the actual spreadsheet from FY21 Capital Improvement Budget. And if I'm reading this right, taking out the 81.9, which I've already spoken about, would basically wipe out the building envelope maintenance and uh, ground and site maintenance dash playgrounds. It wipes out those two budget lines. And uh, if they were already reduced once, from one set $176,000 cumulative, reduced $94,000 down to where they are now. And I just, I, I would really, I think the initial reduction is enough. I, I think we need to keep that money in there so we can keep those those resources up. And like Sarah said, 81, in the grand scheme of things, $82,000 is, is not massive. When I think about what it means to those students. Agree with you. Hillary? I agree with what everyone said. Um, I mean, if 
but yeah, we need to keep that in. But I guess I have a question and maybe Kate can. So Tom did, or the town manager did say at that meeting that um, we needed to remove another 80 whatever from our CIP to meet the, um, to meet the, the goal. But wh why does it have to be from CIP? Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be from CIP, but I think the idea was that we were trying to stay away from the operating budget because- No, I understand that. I just wanted to clarify that it's not, it doesn't have to be from CIP. He was just saying that you need another $80,000 yes. to meet that goal. Okay, yes. okay. Yes. That's, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. And, and other than that, I agree with everyone who already spoke. Nick? You're on mute. Uh, I know. <laughs> I caught myself as I started speaking. Um, just to just to clarify what Hillary just said, because that we're way off that mark anyway, right? Because if we're if we do or don't remove that eighty thousand dollars, we're keeping the two seventy five in, which he wanted us to get out altogether. So we're way away from that mark as it is. I mean, what's eighty one thousand exactly. dollars more away from that mark, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I think then our oops, sorry, Kirsten. Oh, it's, I just wanted to acknowledge that and say thank you to Tom, because I know he's, he's really trying hard to, to make this all work. So I didn't want to just ignore the whole, all of the work that he did to try and make this work. That was it. Thank you. Yeah, good point. So I think Kate, that then puts us at version one. If you guys are ready. Yeah, I think you're right. To, to hear me stumble on a bunch of numbers, okay. Do you want me to read them? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which one, of us, which one of us is sleepier. Yeah, all right. But you're you're, you're uh, official and I'm not. So I will move to approve, to amend the FY21 education budget expenditures approved at the school board's first reading on April 9th as follows. The general fund operating budget increased expenditure budget by $556,000 to support identified COVID-19 related needs. Reduce expenditure budget by 1,374,383 as outlined in the supporting document. Add 400,000 in fund balance to non-tax revenue. These changes result in a reduction to the net general fund expenditure budget of 1,218,383. That then brings the amended general fund expenditures gross budget to 53,553,423 and the amended general fund net budget to 48,437,536. Move to approve as presented. One second. Ready to vote? Ready to vote. Mrs. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Sure. Okay. Uh, Leanne, procedurally, can I combine adult ed, capital improvement, and school nutrition, or do I have to do it separate? Um, I think you need to do it separately because they are four separate items on ballot. Okay. So then um, move approval to amend the adult education budget by reducing the expenditure budget by $3,630 which brings the amended adult education expenditure gross budget to 194,558 and the net budget to 91,370. So moved. Second. Ready to vote. Ready to vote. Mrs. Durgan. Yes. Mrs. Giptos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Okay. And 
move approval to amend the capital improvement budget by reducing the expenditure budget budget by $913,129, which brings the capital improvement expenditure gross budget to $2,220,112, and the capital improvement net budget to $675,915. So moved. Second. Mrs. Jurgen. Yes. Mrs. Giftos. Yes. Dr. Gill. Yes. Ms. Casalonis. Yes. Ms. Layton. Yes. Mrs. Sider. Yes. Mrs. Turner. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Okay. Um, and there's no changes to the school nutrition budget. So that stays as, as approved at first reading. And I think procedurally, we just need to go back to, or did I mess this up, Kate? I think at Is this point, I think at this point, if you just make a motion to approve the budget, the total education budget as amended, I think you'll be right where okay. you need to be. Perfect, thank you. So then move to approve the total education, uh, general fund operating, adult education, school nutrition, and capital budget budgets as amended. Moved. So moved. Second. Ready for a vote? Mrs. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 7th, 2020, as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Beck? <clears throat> yes. Excellent. Um, I know that we have mentioned the names already for our probationary professionals and our uh, continuous contract professionals, but I would like to take a moment and make sure that we confirm their appointments. Again, letting them know we really appreciate them. They deserve to be named more than one time tonight or rep uh, recognized more than one time tonight. So I'd like to request a motion to approve our second year probationary professionals as presented. So moved. moved. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. We can move to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Okay. A motion to approve our third year probationary professionals as named previously. So moved. Second. I believe we're ready to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Dyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Um, for 6.4.3, our first year continuous contract professionals, this is one of those moments where Zoom just does not do justice. I wish that we could be seeing you right now, shaking your hands and welcoming you to the district. Right. Um, but a motion to accept our first year continuous contract professionals as named previously. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Ready to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. 
Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Congratulations and welcome to the district. 6.4.4 is a motion to accept our adult education director. Um, Sandy, I don't know if you want to read about uh, Mary Ann Doyle or if you'd like me to. I'd be happy to. Uh, Mary Ann Doyle is before you tonight. She's been chosen to fill the position created by retirement. Uh, my recommendation that she be the new director of adult ed. Ms. Doyle received her degree in special ed from the University of Maine in Farmington and her master's degree in ed leadership from St. Joe's College. Ms. Doyle is a certified adult ed director with over 20 years of experience in adult education and community uh, in the community as an administrator, coordinator, and practitioner. She most recently was the adult ed director for MSAD6. The recommendation is to appoint Marianne Doyle as a new adult ed director for Scarborough School System. So moved. Second. I believe we're ready to vote. Great. Mrs. Dur Mrs. Jurgen? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Congratulations and welcome. All right, next. A motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 40560 for discussions concerning the superintendent's evaluation not to return to public session. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. If we can move to vote. Ms. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Sider? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. 